Hey everyone, so the purpose of this video is mainly for me to test out my multimedia paper. So I'm drawing on an 11 by 14 size, so it's pretty big, but um, I kind of wanted to start doing larger artwork anyway, and so I'm really hoping that I love this paper because I like the size, and uh, it also fits nicely in frames because 11 by 14 is a standard photo frame size. So I'm I, well, I'll just say now I do like it, so uh, hopefully I'll continue to like it. I haven't done a whole lot with it at this point. So this picture was inspired by one of the little pictures you see on the right-hand side of the video right now. There's three model poses. Basically, I just typed into Google Images model pose or fashion poses is what I typed in. And I really liked the one picture, how the girl had kind of an S curve to her body. So I decided to base my picture off that. I sketched a small thumbnail and then I scanned it and blew it up bigger and then sketched my more refined picture on top of it. I just traced over the thumbnail really, really roughly and then added some more details. And then I traced it yet again onto the mixed media paper with clean lines. And then here I'm taking some masking, like a masking sheet or sheet of frisket to cover up my picture because I want to do the background with my Copic airbrush system. So I make sure to cover up all the areas where the girl's body is and then I cut out along the lines using an X-Acto knife. And then you just peel away the areas where you want to airbrush and then you airbrush. It's a little bit tricky because you don't want to cut too far into it because it makes a dent in the paper. You have to cut hard enough that you're cutting through the frisket but not cutting into your picture. And another way to do it would just be to lay the frisket over top while keeping the backing on it so it's not sticking to your picture and then trace using a pen or something, uh, trace the frisk over on the frisket and then cut it out separately and stick it down in your picture. But I think that would be so hard because you would not be able to line it up. First of all, the tracing is not gonna be perfect. And then trying to lay it down after the fact and have it match up, that's gonna be so, difficult. So uh, I just did the method where you just lay it directly on it and then you cut along the lines and peel it off. So yeah, there are a couple areas where I have lines, like dented lines in the paper where I didn't want them, but oh well, I, I'll learn as I go because I've actually used this stuff one other time. I've had it for years and I only used it on one other picture. And when I did that one, I, I think if I remember correctly, I think I colored the girl yeah, I col it was like a Halloween themed picture with this witch lady. I colored her and then laid the frisket down and cut it out and then did the background. So she was colored before I did the background and the background ended up being too dark and didn't match her coloring, but I didn't want to redo her whole coloring. So the background just ended up being really dark compared to her, which is a little bit weird. So for this one, I decided I want to do the background first and then base my coloring of her off of that. So that's what I did this time. There's only one major danger with that is that um, because her colors are lighter than the background. When you're coloring up close to the background, the pen is very easily going to lift ink off and um, drag it and smear it onto her. And I did have a bit of trouble with that, but not too much. I was pretty careful, so I feel like it wasn't too bad. Also with the airbrushing, when you airbrush, the ink for the most part sits on top of the paper, so it's more prone to smearing as opposed to if I had just colored in the background regularly. And I know a lot of people think that airbrushing uses a ton of ink, and it can depending what you're doing, but uh, it's just spraying a fine mist onto the top of the paper. It's not it's way different than if you're coloring with the marker itself and you're soaking the ink into the page. That's obviously using a lot of ink when you're soaking the paper like that. But if you're spraying a fine mist, it's not that much ink. So if you're scared, airbrushing will just eat up all your Copic marker ink. You don't have to worry about that because that's really not the case unless you just go to town and layer and layer and layer until it's, I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it, yeah. Oh, and here I'm peeling it off, which is very satisfying. It's one of my favorite parts, and I know this dream was excited for because I was live streaming while I was making this art. I had to do put it at regular speed here. It's not sped up at all because it's just uh, seeing it peel off. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Now 
Now, as for the concept behind the girl, I mean, I kind of told you how I figured out the pose. Um, I didn't really know at first that I wanted her hair to be cut like that. I didn't have the picture fully planned out. I had the general pose and I knew how I wanted to do the background. I did a little thumbnail study of the lighting and I knew I wanted, um, well, no, no, no. I, ha I did that after I found out the hair thing because as I was thumbnailing and doodling and stuff, uh, I just realized that because I did the one side of the hair and then I was about to do the other side and I thought that'd be cool if it was shorter and I thought it'd be neat if you could see the hair as if it had just been cut. So I don't know, that was my thought behind it. And then so I did the background in such a way that the lightest point is right where her hair is being severed. And so it draws your eye there. That was the purpose behind that. And um, I feel like, you know, there's not like a huge deep meaning behind the picture or anything or a really big story. It's just, to me, it represents unwanted change. So she's looking back as if it almost caught her slightly off guard that her hair was being cut. And so that's just what it symbolizes, unwanted change. I don't know what cut it. There's really no story behind it. It's just meant to represent unwanted change being forced upon you. <laughs> So here I'm coloring in the skin and I actually went back and did more shading on it later at the very end of the video because I felt like it just looked too fluorescent using only those colors. I used my E50, my R01 and R02. I usually don't use the Rs for skin just because they are so bright orangey and pinky, um, but I wanted it to suit the color scheme of the picture, which was a lot of red. And so I used a more reddish tone for the skin. But then later on, I went back and added some grays just to add a different tone to it, because right now it looks kind of not good. It looks like I just used different shades of the same color. So that's why I decided to go back in and add some gray. And I chose gray because there's a bunch of gray in her hair and in her dress. So yeah. Also a stylistic choice was to have everything very simple and flowy. So like I mentioned, I was inspired by that picture I found where the girl is in kind of an S curve shape. And so I really wanted her outfit to be so simple so that it really emphasizes that shape. I didn't want anything too flashy on the outfit. Plus it would also draw your eye away from the hair. So I just did super basic, it's like a white slip basically. So yeah, and then her hair is kind of similar in the sense that it has a few pieces breaking off, but it's really just one wavy shape with not too much detail. So yeah, I, I purposely went for a simplistic look. Part of me likes it, part of me doesn't, but eh, it's all right. <laughs> I also wanted her body very long and slender, but um, it looks kind of weird because I, I, I purposely made her arms long and her body skinny and everything, but her boobs seem too high because of that. It's like when you compare her elbow and her boob position, it's just not right, but I don't know. That's the major thing when I look at my artwork now that it's completed, that's the one thing I notice a lot is just the boobies <laughs> and her mouth. I feel like I liked the face shape and the way the mouth looked better in this sketch. And now that it's all colored in and finished, I feel like I don't like it as much. And her face shape did get altered slightly with the coloring because as I was coloring up to it with the dark color, it did sort of change the shape of her jawline or cheek line just, just ever so slightly. But um, I kind of wish she had a bit more chin and maybe not quite as small of a mouth, but yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I think it's all right. I mean, the mouth is proportionate to the nose, but then the eyes look huge. So either I should have made smaller eyes or just made the nose a bit wider and the mouth bigger. Just, I'm not trying to like bash my own art. I know some people say, like, why do you always put down your own art? I'm just trying to, I'm just giving my own criticisms just my thoughts after I'm done it and I look back on it I'm like okay these are the things I would change if I could like if this was a digital piece I could easily go and change those things but it's not so it just is the way it is also a few cut marks on the page like I mentioned with the knife I made some unnecessary extra cuts that I kind of wish weren't there so yeah just a few things but I do like it overall I like the shapes involved and I like the concept and the simplicity of it so Overall, I like it. And it was fun getting to use my airbrush and the frisket. I now I just want to use it so much more often. It's just so fun cutting it out and peeling it off. I don't know. It's just the satisfaction. 
Oh, and I purposely didn't add any blush or any highlights to her eyes. Her eyes are actually just a gradient. There's really no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Definitive. There we go. There's no definitive pupil. It's just kind of a gradient from pupil to iris and it's just using grays and then no highlight and then nothing on the cheeks. Just, I wanted to keep it very bare bones in terms of her, like no jewelry, no makeup. Well, like, you could argue she's wearing lipstick, but maybe her lips are just that pink. <laughs> I did go back and thicken her lash line a little bit, but she only has two little eyelashes, which is less than I usually do. So wanted to keep her very simple. And so, yeah, that is the picture. And I was outside taking the final shot so I could have good lighting. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. What are you doing? I'm trying to sort these. I'm trying to sort my receipts, baby. How cute. I also edited this before I started sorting the receipts.